towards the sort of nuclear uh, uh, energy. So that poses an important risk as far as the contamination of water is concerned. Contaminated air, biological toxin, gaseous particles, uh, we will study in detail what uh, what about the, what uh, it means the contamination of the air. Contamination of the soil, pesticides, solid waste, which gets percolated through the soil during agriculture practices and also the, because of the poor waste management, uh, the our household waste and the industrial waste get mixed with the soil that gets into our uh, uh, on the food plate and through our internal system. So that again uh, poses a, a grave environmental risk. Climate risk. Now we are hearing a lot of uh, uh, sort of noise around the climate risk, the heat wave, cold wave, extreme weather events. We are seeing the extreme weather events currently uh, in the northern part of the country, be it Himachal Pradesh, Delhi, uh, and also in the northeast part. The few months before we were facing extreme heat wave, a bit in the western part of the country or the northern side. Then uh, in the midway, we have seen the cyclone, which is uh, which has impacted the west coast uh, in Gujarat, state of Gujarat. So these risks are real and uh, we are experiencing it in the day-to-day -day manner. Uh, so if we really want to sort of classify that uh, environmental risk, the build-up environment also, as I said, the housing, solid full mass use, green spaces, the facility of transport, these are all uh, uh, constitutes environmental risk. Why these are the risk? Because that risk in terms of the health outcomes. For example, housing, you know. So if you have a housing which has potential for, uh, which has increases the chances of heat during a heat wave, then it has more impact on, on, on the health. Right during the heat wave, solid mass fuel waste. We all know that constitutes majority of the indoor air pollution, and that in terms affects the health outcome. Green spaces. There are a lot of studies available which correlates the availability of the green space around and the uh, sort of mental health outcomes to the cardiovascular outcomes, particularly from the European countries. Facility of transport, the public transport and the individual transport. There's a lot of evidence available that impacts the uh, uh, in terms of uh, health outcomes, particularly cardiovascular neurological outcomes. Food-related uh, environmental risk, contaminated food, poor quality food, food insecurity, excess. So all this, uh, and this are, I will say these are a traditional environmental risk, what we are studying since long uh, during our graduation days, that food-driven uh, risk of the health outcomes, be it uh, you know, poor quality food, adulteration, lack of nutrients, or food insecurities or excess that both poses the risk in terms of the health outcome. <laughs> What are the environmental risks with respect to the sociocultural? The behavior when we say the substance use, unsafe sex, and the poor lifestyle. In, in, the, in the age of non-communicable diseases, this imposes a lot of uh, challenge with respect to the environmental risk. Social, social environment in the form of poverty, customs, and taboo. When we say the social determinant of health, it is an important determinant which leads to the as a, uh, which leads to the various health outcomes. Then the traditional occupation related uh, environment risk uh, addressing the health outcome, be it a workplace settings, uh, in the industrial setting or in the office setting where we work in the healthcare setup that poses important environmental risk to the, uh, the human life. The school setting, you know, that is again important risk in terms of the infectious diseases, influenza, scabies, and other viral diseases that can spread to uh, uh, through contact, you know, that again poses an environmental risk in these settings. So you can see the wider uh, spectrum uh, there in terms of we really want to study the each and every risk considering the all types of environment what we have seen so far. So the, the horizon is pretty wide in this case. When it comes to the disease burden, almost 24% of the diseases and 23% of the mortality globally are attributed to the uh, environmental risk factors, what we have seen so far, whatever risk we have seen so far. Most important is a stroke followed by the ischemic heart disease and unintentional injuries and cancer. So, you know, as a, a priority, disease priority, it, it has become again important to um, understand this environmental risk and to identify the interventions which can work to mitigate this environmental risk. In our commitments also, if you see the, our global commitment, our national commitment, the environment uh, features in a, in a big way. You know? So most of our SDG goals are linked to the environment in one way or other, other form. 
so there is a commitment the world is acknowledging it and there is also priority to the environmental uh, determinants of the health that can be seen uh, in the various policy level commitments at international and national level coming to the environmental levels of the risk you can see the unsafe water and sanitation hand washing is there is a level 2 air pollution is also features on the level 2 but in the level 3 where we have seen that particulate matter pollution ambient ozone pollution where we have the evidence more you know these levels are more with respect to the available scientific evidence we have more evidence with respect to the particulate matter pollution ambient ozone pollution particular also in with in terms of the wash we have a unsafe water source evidence related uh, to the risk of unsafe water source unsafe sanitation uh, hand washing related evidence to other environmental risk we have uh, evidence related to the lead exposure occupational carcinogens and all uh, as far as a level 4 are concerned with respect to the evidence the only air pollution has that kind of evidence with uh, in, in in the domain of environmental health where there is absolute linkages uh, with uh, with the exposure in the form of ambient particulate matter and household air pollution and with the various health outcomes here and climate change we all know so there is a lot of uh, sort of talk about the climate change a lot of international commitments at national level commitments we we can see it which are sort of uh, uh, addressing this issue of the climate change which constitutes more four things rising temperature extreme weather events uh, rising sea levels and uh, in, uh, increase in the co levels carbon dioxide level and you can see from this figure again i will say that you must have seen this see uh, must have saw this in this figure many times you know so with the heat related illnesses injuries fatalities mental health impacts of climate change has taken a lot of uh, sort of uh, uh, leverage in the recent time and the asthma cardiovascular diseases the vector borne diseases leading to the due to the changing vector ecologies increasing allergies leading to the respiratory asthmas uh, the enteric diseases happening due to changing water quality impacts uh, climate change impact to agriculture health leads to the malnutrition and diarrheal diseases so all and there are a lot of scientific evidence it is not a theoretical there is scientifically collected information across the countries in india also which is available which links to the climate variabilities with the various health outcomes now as i said before uh, we will discuss the opportunities challenges of the environmental health with respect to the air pollution uh, so what is why air pollution important as i said it is there is a level 4 evidence uh, with respect to the indoor and outdoor air pollution with the uh, its a health impact we have currently so one in every eight death in india is also attributed to the air pollution so as a country also it is a very important priority as far as the environmental risk is concerned air pollution second most common leading factor in delhi and out of this the pm 2.5 is a major pollutant and almost uh, you can see the 99% population is at the risk uh, if you compare with the who standards of the air pollution and this figure tells you the impact and the pyramid of impact of the air pollution you know the death the it's only the ice i will say the tip of the iceberg that is only a uh, small proportion you will see the deaths but if you see the down there are huge on the base of the pyramid there is a larger impact which happens here you know there in the millions numbers is numbers are in millions if you say the severity is less but the numbers are uh, large so morbidity is more in terms of the lung function decrement inflammation cardiac effect respiratory symptoms medication uh, asthma attacks doctor visit school absence a loss of work emergency visit so in terms of the morbidity there is a lot of impact of the uh, air pollution uh, as the population level uh, coming to the opportunities so these are i will i can uh, classify the opportunities into these five domains one is a collaboration generating scientific evidence advocacy communication working with the national programs and community engagement i see these are the five opportunities these are the five major domains where we have scope of work in future as a, all early career researchers the post graduate students can work if they are really interested to work in the in the field of environmental health these are five domains what we are supposed to do under these five domains we will see one by one uh coming to the opportunities uh to collaboration 
So I will give the example of the collaboration what we have uh, at AIMS. It is AIMS IIT Delhi collaboration. So why collaboration? Collaboration helps us in capitalizing on one's strengths and also mitigating the limitations which we have as a discipline, as a skills, as a competency. So the strengths of our, our strength is epidemiology, medical science, the running cohorts, network development, the skills of designing surveys, right? So these are our skills uh, as a community medicine experts. And the strengths of IIT will be exposure assessment, technology use, GIS, modeling, all their strengths. So if we really collaborate, so our strengths get into a multitude. You know, so that helps to uh, sort of taking science uh, in future direction to minimizing the limitation. And obviously for the, both the parties can uh, in this. Another important thing is institutional mechanism. So whenever you in future plan a collaboration, try to get into the institutional mechanism. This will ensure the sustainability of the collaboration because without sustainability, the efforts doesn't last long and it doesn't provide that much impetus to the efforts you take during the collaboration. So institutional mechanism is very crucial in ensuring sustainability. Generating local evidence. Again, we see that uh, science always uh, is in progress, you know, it never stops. So whenever there is ample evidence available, there is always a scope of generating more evidence, particularly in the country like us, which is more diverse with respect to geography, which is more diverse with respect to the population habit, which is more diverse with respect to the risk of the climate we have, you know. So there is always a scope of uh, generating a local scientific evidence uh, with respect to environment health. So how we can develop, just give you one example where in our uh, field practice area in the Ballavgad, we did this study by uh, mortality estimation due to PM 2.5 exposure uh, with respect with the help of IIT Delhi uh, with Dr. Sagnik and his team. So where we try to establish the linkages of mortality, due mortality cost specific mortality and PM 2.5 exposure. And these are the variables. I'm just showing this because this will tell you also what are the things which are required to do to generate such kind of evidence. So we have verbal autopsy based uh, assessment of cause of death, mortality surveillance, where we can ascertain the cause of death doing the interview. We call it as a verbal autopsy. And then uh, uh, we have the social demographic surveillance uh, information, which gives you the count of uh, mortality in our area, I think since last uh, three, four decades. We got PM 2.5 exposure data from the satellite-based PM 2.5 exposure, which is calibrated again the ground-based measurements and the demographic data which was available. The meteorological department helped us uh, uh, to get a climate-related information. And also we got uh, normalized difference vegetation in this NDVI from the meteorological department. So it was again a big collaboration to get this information. Uh, just briefly, because I, I got a few questions uh, which were shared with me with respect to assessment of uh, air pollution related measurements. So if you go to the air pollution related exposure assessment, there can be personalized exposure monitoring. You can see in the figure where the sensors, these are all sensors where you can wear the person or participant has to wear these sensors uh, all along throughout the day. And they continuously monitors the levels, PM2.0, whatever sensor we have with respect to the air pollutant. Another, another exposure assessment is at the population level, where what we call as the ecological assessment, where modeling, satellite-based information, uh, the station-based monitoring, and the modeler-based estimation can be done. So, of course, the personal level exposure is always a gold standard in a sense, but there is an issue of uh, calibration. It's more challenging there in terms of availability, in terms of cost, it is more expensive. Population level measurement, though, it's very you know, sort of cost friendly, but it has issues with respect to the, again, the ecological policy effect that it is there, but in terms of the uh, uh, exposure misclassification, uh, there is there and the scaling up the <clears throat> things also, there's the issue in the ecological level. Just going further with respect to source of air pollution data, because we hardly discuss this in our uh, MD curriculum, that sources of air pollution, you can see here in, in the figure, this slide is courtesy by Dr. Sagnik Day from IIT Delhi. You can see here, there are various red dots that tells you the uh, monitoring stations of uh, CTCV, which are monitored there. 
So these are the particular uh, matter, pollutants which get monitored. So PM, that is particulate matter 2.5 size, particulate matter 10 size, sulfur dioxide, nitrous dioxide, ozone, benzene, and, and carbon, dioxide, uh, carbon monoxide, etc. are uh, sort of measured during the NCAP program, that is National Clean Air Program. Uh, so this is available, you can see the stations here. So there is also application called a Samir application where you can on the mobile, you can see the information on the stations. Then satellite based PM 2.5 database is available now and other pollutants also they are working out with respect to NO2, SO2 and O3. Other networks are there in the form of IMD, ISRO, MAPAN, SUFFER networks which collects the localized information of the air pollutants and the personal exposure monitoring, this can be sources. Right. So this is uh, the satellite based information that tells you the uh, exposure uh, at the various uh, uh, sort of uh, across the country. You know, you can see this Ganga went entirely exposed to the higher concentration of PM 2.5. So these are the uh, sources of air pollution data, as I said, uh, Central Pollution Control Board. This website is available where you can get the information and the suffer application, which I said, which is maintained by the uh, IMD, uh, where some specific locations, the pollutant or information is available. So this can, the data can be asked and uh, retrieved from uh, these two sites. Coming to the health data, morbidity, where there's also a question about from where to get the health data and the exposure data. So health data, there are a lot of surveys available from NFHS, various around LASI survey, and GADS, uh, NMHS, National Mental Health Survey. There is a second round of NMHS, which will be happening soon. National Sample Surveys, National Crime Record Bureau Information, and National NCD Monitoring Surveys. So these are long, uh, large surveys available. The surveys data, the survey data are in the public domain or can be obtained by contacting their uh, uh, PI or respective institution. And that can be used if you really want to link uh, these uh, outcomes with the uh, various environmental exposures. Coming to the mortality data, we have both all cause mortality and cause specific mortality. These are this can be obtained from the civil registration system data, sample registration, large population based surveys, and cause specific mortalities are available through various systems. We have another mechanism. You you all must have uh, heard about a uh, million death study before. So now this million death study is converted or transformed into the Minerva. A study that is mortality in India established to verbal autopsies, uh, which is located at uh, Center for Community Medicine, Ames, New Delhi. Professor Anand Krishnan is a principal investigator, and we all are involved in this. And there are 23 medical colleges and institutes in India. They are part of this network mortality network. This data uh, is the SRS data, which is a cost, cost specific data generated by the verbal autopsy. So this can also be used for generating evidence. So I hope this answers the question which is raised uh, in terms of what data we can use with respect to the exposure as well as the health. Though uh, uh, I really acknowledge the fact that there are the challenges in terms of the data access, uh, uh, particularly from the with respect to the mortality data, particularly from uh, post COVID era, you know, but that is the only option we have. Uh, there are also, and three, four SDSS sites which are available in the country uh, that can also be contacted if you really need the data with respect to mortality, uh, particularly cost specific mortality. One site we have at the Ballabgarh, one site available at the Vadu Pune, another site is Birbhum. I also encourage all of you because all of you are part of the community medicine departments to encourage this uh, surveillance of mortality, particularly in your field practice area we, we we both have we all have both a rural as well as an urban field practice area so these uh, field practice area can serve a great platform for this mortality surveillance and then linkages of this data with environmental risk can happen and local evidence as i said can be generated so using that data I was talking about, we are able to generate a publications with respect to the, in, in the Delhi as well as in the uh, rural setting where we are able to showcase that mortality is linked with the daily PM 2.5 uh, exposure. Uh, you can see here the almost 10 unit rise in PM 2.5 lead to 0.3% rise in incidence rate uh, in our study at a rural setup. 
the similar thing though we haven't got a cost specific related uh, significant result but all cost mortality was significant this is another uh, way to get uh, this uh, the evidence generated that using hospital data so far we were talking about the community based data so in this uh, exercise we are able to generate a hospital data from our hospital and link it with the pm 2.5 exposure you know at our hospital at the bulb that shows a significant result uh here again uh another uh opportunity which was there way back in 2015 and 16 where we able to sort of look into traffic rationing system related uh intervention for addressing air pollution again this is a good example when we use the hospital based data uh, of a hospital admissions and the opd consultations and try to link it with the air quality so this can serve as an important source of hospital data Another sort of uh, design uh, we talk about is a systematic review and the meta-analysis. So there is a lot of demand with respect to the compilation of the evidence, corroboration of the evidence, uh, and generating the pooled estimates, you know, uh, synthesizing the evidence. So here also we made some attempt in terms of what works, what doesn't work with respect to the air pollution. So this technique can also be used for generating the local evidence. This is again a, a systematic review uh, with respect to the depression and the uh, air pollution uh, PM 2.5 exposure. Uh, there is, as I said, that uh, the heat is again an important uh, environmental risk. We also work uh, heat in terms of uh, this is a review which was published uh, where we sort of generated the evidence with respect to the uh, mortality and the heat in the India. You know, so similarly, the review meta analysis generating the, using a hospital data, community based data can be used for generating the local evidence. This is a technology use, you know, uh, you can see here where we able to use the GIS technology and map the various uh, climate related parameters, air, uh, rainfall, uh, your temperature, humidity with the vector borne diseases in Delhi and CIA. And this sort of uh, tools which are available, which can generate a heat maps, and that really conveys in a very fascinating manner what is happening on the ground and what is the risk uh, with respect to the various uh, climate related variabilities. You know, so this is again an example where uh, we can use the uh, IT tools or the GIS technologies to generate uh, evidence. Now coming to the second domain that is working with the national program. So as a, one of the component was the research, also we are the important stakeholders as a community medicine specialist, as a public health specialist, we are important stake in national program. So it is very important to engage with the national program. So there is a national program called as the National Program for Climate Change and Human Health, which is from the health side, which is managed by the uh, NCDC and the government, the Ministry of Health Government of India. So you can see we can really contribute in the National Health Program with respect to the making the guidelines, making the framework of uh, action plan development with respect to the climate change and health and the cardiopulmonary diseases, making the training manuals for uh, district nodal officers, you know, which are managing this program for air pollution and health impact. Uh, we are also working with the NCAP, that is National um, uh, Air Pollution Control Program with CPCB for revising the standard, revising the air quality standard, national air quality standards. So this is again an important opportunity uh, if you're really interested to work in environmental health. These are important opportunities with the national health programs. <clears throat> Coming to the advocacy and communication. Again, advocacy, when we talk, to our people, higher to the policymakers, to the program people, communication when we talk to the public, talk to the communi uh, community, you know. Uh, so again, our uh, opportunity of working with the program, working with the uh, community is there in terms of designing the uh, IEC tools, the BCC tools, developing some uh, newsletters. This is a newsletter we have under K for India, which is a collaboration between AIMS uh, and IIT Delhi, where we try to uh, sort of communicate what's happening with respect to air pollution and health. So similar exercise can also be carried out in terms of synthesizing the various news which are available with respect to environment and health, various research articles, which uh, local research articles, which hardly get published in the reputed journal. So some sort of effort can be made to uh, sort of communicate widely. 
use of media again important uh, important uh, stakeholders the media we can really use in terms of advancing science in terms of uh, conveying this right science to the media and to the community you know what is the right message to be conveyed to the community this is important skill and competency we all have to develop and that is also how we have the opportunity there advocacy with various stakeholders be it government with other sectors be it a developmental sectors that remains the important stakeholders and when we really need to identify the key messages for each sector you know you will you will learn this once you work in this area what are the key messages for each sector so that that get translated into the action okay this is an important skill we all need to develop Community engagement again the most important part as far as uh, our we the community medicine people are concerned you know so we have to engage with the, all the stakeholders be it agriculture stakeholder where we are engaged with respect to the issue of uh, addressing the parali burning issue in the Haryana state of Haryana you can engage with various health related sectors uh, allied sectors Panchayat Raj institutions here that is also we carried out in this particular project. Then are we able to identify the facilitators and the barriers for the parallel burning. Again, this is there for a publication currently. So community engagement is very crucial, you know, particularly environment related uh, uh, issues, because ultimate the burnt of entire risk or the, this thing is uh, an environmental risk has to be bared by the community or the population level. So taking them along, identifying the solution can only be done by taking them along by discussing with them or taking them on board. Uptake of the intervention. Again, we have the various interventions. You can see the Safar app, Samir app. One of our student is working on use or uptake of this Safar application by the community. What are the facilitators? What are the barriers? How frequently they use? If they don't use, why don't you use this application? Samir application, why don't you use this application? Mask use, when they use mask for assist to air pollution. When you see Ujwala scheme, what are the barriers and facilitators of Ujwala scheme uh, uptake? Uh, who are the people who are using the free LPG? Who are the people who are not using? Why not are using? So the uptake intervention again provides an important opportunity for all of us to sort of contribute in this. So there are many interventions happening at the municipality level, at the state level, at the national level, which are addressing the various environmental risks. I'm just putting few here, but there are various environmental risks they are put, uh, uh, that can be addressed, are addressed currently by the various municipalities, uh, the local government, the state government. So that can be evaluated by using a robust study design, you know, uh, and so their uptake inside facilitators and again the, again customizing the interventions can be done by using this uh, scientific evidence now coming to the challenges and air pollution uh, health related research or generating evidence or i think this is also true for other environmental risk assessment you know the most important challenge is outcome assessment is not specific you know, the health outcomes are not specific you know you cannot pinpoint environmental risk with the particular health outcome that easily so that remains an important challenge. Exposure assessment, all environmental risk assessment is pretty, pretty challenging. The methods, the tools, the equipments which are available are currently expensive. Uh, they are not available in that quantity so that everyone can, everyone can use it. The skills of using, uh, which are required for using these equipments are not uh, available with everyone. So these are the challenging challenges which are there with respect to exposure measurement. Third is the response relationship. So you can see the response here is not, those related response is not linear with respect to most of the environmental risk. It is in this shape, right? So once the one stage is one stage is achieved, you will see the plateauing of the health outcome, right? So if you really want to make some impact on the ground level, you, you have to reduce the risk drastically. Right then and then you will see the impact happening on the ground level, at the population level, at the individual level. So this is an important challenge. And mitigation measures are rarely with the health domain. They are mostly with the domain outside the health department or outside the health authorities. That remains an important challenge with the environmental health uh, assessment. 
there is a source characterization so characterizing the environmental risk be it air pollution or other risk it is important that is in depth understanding of the health risk traffic related pollution is a important challenge and assessing suitability and vulnerability who is vulnerable more who is uh, suitable for uh, what is the suitability in terms of the uh, in terms of the health outcome which to take who are more which are the population which is more vulnerable for the environmental risk so all these are this poses important challenges with respect to if you really want to take up this as a research or if you want to work in this area so you really need a good amount of patience uh, if you want to take up environmental health as your area of interest for future work so what we should do as a postgraduate student or early career researchers if you really want to do in environmental health first is a knowledge and skill enha enhancement it is very very important particularly in this formative days of yours Uh, during md and post md 3 4 3 4 years to enhance your skills and knowledge in this particular domain of environmental health be it epidemiology be it exposure be it outcome assessment you have to do a skill enhancement of yourself take up a research idea for thesis dissertation there are a lot of young uh, students who might be joining this uh, uh, lecture so take this idea of environmental risk assessment their health outcome linkages in your thesis in your dissertation right so that this can be studied in further you get more idea with the uh, this in this domain field practice area as i said before sgss sites can be used for generating local evidence uh, another thing is important though something is pretty much clear at the global level at a national level but it is important to identify what are the community local community needs and the priority you know so this can be taken up uh by the local by by doing a local research thesis a small uh, projects do not hesitate to take help as i said why i am telling you about our collaboration because uh, we always as uh, uh, i will say the community medicine specialists we really hesitate to take help of the beat clinician beat the basic scientists do not hesitate to take help we cannot do everything so it is always good to take help of the people or experts who have a better skill than us in their respective domain so always take help take help of the mentor identify the mentor and the promote mentees identify the mentor who can mend who can provide you guidance in this particular area he can be from your institute he can be outside your institute he can also be from outside this country so identifying right people for right uh, sort of environment risk is very crucial to move forward in this field i've just listed a few uh, uh, because there was a question related to the capacity building in the environment health in india there's lot of fellowships available in various university reputed universities and institute in the country there are short certificate courses available through the public health foundation of india we as a key for india also carry out few uh, capacity building exercises icmr institute like nire nioh then uh, nidm there is institute of environmental health and uh, safety uh, measures then iits they carry out a lot of uh, short course uh, certificate course related to environmental health so look for it and you can attend to enhance your skills there are online courses available from coursera international society for environmental epidemiology that is ise regularly conduct the online course of uh, skill enhancement capacity building with respect to environmental health you can also take use of it there are initiatives lectures webinars by our associations like this iapsm ipha which work uh, on the in this particular domain dwell into on this particular domain so you can also take help of them there are national program npcchs they also carry out various activities at the state level engage with them at the institute level if they are organizing some activities so there are a lot of avenues available with respect to the capacity building uh, so this is something for the teachers and the mentors they need to uh, ensure the due recognition of environmental health in teaching and training curriculum dedicated sessions at national and state level events whenever we organize any event uh, at the institute at the department put this environmental health as a priority there are various public health leadership course they can take on up uh, for our young researchers or young graduates small grant research uh, for the young professionals you know that can be taken on their icmr uh, 
STS projects also at the institute level also there are small small grants uh, our association IAPSM also gave some grant Ford Foundation related grants so some in these grants environmental health related research project can be taken up collaboration with the national programs in training uh, organizing training doing the external reviews of the health system assessment can be taken up and medical colleges are really need to sort of uh, engaged with respect to the various programs and the initiatives just before i end this is a kefir india website you can visit all of you can visit where we are try to put up the various literature available across the india with respect to air pollution and the health so we have mapped the bibliography there if you really want to join kefir india network you can mail us at kefir india at gmail.com you can follow us on twitter there is a form available where you can fill in you can become a member and get the updates about this activity lastly the passion preservance and partnership are essential for advocating the science so we really need to inculcate all these skills and this formative years of yours during your md or early post md period are very crucial for developing this attitude aptitude of passion perseverance and partnership to so take up any idea and work towards it day and night you know so develop your skills develop your capacities identify your mentors identify the place where you want to uh, sort of develop your skills you know the particular place institute read the literature which is available with respect to the environmental risk you want to uh, study more in detail so that is up to you uh, how dedicatedly how passionately you uh, you pursue this and lastly as always say this we really need to pledge to be environmental champion when 100 year old tulsi gowda can do it we all can do it as a together we really need to protect the environment we really need to conserve the environment because that ultimately has impact on our day to day livelihood and our for our future also thank you so much i'll be happy to answer uh, any questions or queries uh, which are there thank you thank you so much sir that was a comprehensive view of not only the theory behind the environmental health but your practical years of uh, working in the field and publishing research out of the area of environmental health and how as a teamwork you were able to get out all this information of this with the work and dedication sir and so that this is be a role model example for our young students sir that how if you have the passion behind it and you are able to put in that effort it will be inspiring for the young students sir thank you so much for sharing your work sir thank you so a specific question which was asked among the audience that which you have partly covered also but like which indoor air quality monitor is appropriate for st uh, scientific study and can centers sponsor the same uh there are a lot of uh, as i said indoor uh, sensor based lcs we call the low cost sensor based monitors which are available uh they are as much as cheap from 300 that goes to the thousands also but as i said there is a issue of calibration and currently we do not have any policy at the government level which like we have it for other instruments equipments but we do not have that much that policy for low cost sensors but there are a good uh, amount of uh, various products available with respect to low cost sensors and the monitors which can be used uh, and mostly they measure a pm particulate matter uh, related exposure so that can be used so any monitor available that can be used but some sort of exercise with respect to the calibration should be taken up yes sir so and uh, so for regarding this and getting the calibration any way to validate the instrument that you are using which you would uh, suggest for the students if they are uh, looking forward to go like to have the instrument validated so there is something called a npl available in uh, delhi uh, so that laboratory validates the equipments uh, you can also contact uh, iit delhi uh, uh, dr sagnik day where uh, who sort of help to we can help you to calibrate this uh, uh, equipments uh, and also you can contact us we can navigate you to the right person for uh, validating these instruments thank you sir and uh, sir uh, as the another student is very passionate about this and has said as the rise of ncd and multiple web of causation is occurring that the environmental health aspect should be taken up at a further steps 
So what else can be done at the institute level? As you've already mentioned, going out in the community, but what else can we do at the institute level with where we are working as students, sir? So as I said, there are two things you can do. Uh, participate in advancing the science uh, by contributing, doing small local research. Second thing, I, I will also, I always say that uh, our action should speak more, you know. The small, small intervention which we can do at our institute level, at our departmental level, try to put it on the paper. Just see, do the interventions, what see the impact of it. I will just give a few examples. Like we did, we started the monitoring air quality in, in the institute, you know just see indoor and outdoor air quality, uh, what is that? So we're trying to put this up on the paper and just see we have very clean green initiatives which is happening at the Institute. See the impact of it. A similar thing, that's one example. You can take a lot of uh, thing. Uh, and again, I'm saying this is a very vast subject. So I am only able to cover the air pollution, which is a small part of it. There are a lot of uh, uh, risks and uh, domain uh, subdomains available with respect to environment. So water, sanitation, uh, the heat, as I said, climate. So again, heat. The the various interventions can be done with respect to heat. The IEC to the community, IFPA. So do identify the intervention, pilot it in your IFPA, publish it. So this should be our uh, mantra. You know, interventions are important. Most of the time. We uh, uh, we land up in a sort of exaggerating the problem. Yes, there is a problem. There is a problem, but we really need to move forward. So what work? What doesn't work? What are the small small interventions which we can do uh, that needs to be piloted in our field practice area? Thank you, sir. And uh, sir, another question. The last question which was there was that in the three years residency period. Many students are saying they are hesitant to take up this topic because it is requiring a long duration and they are not able to find out the sample size that they should take for this kind of a study, sir. So any tips for the students who want to take up the topic but are hesitant to get into it for the sample size and the duration of the study, sir? Uh, I come As I said in my challenges slide, you know, so that is a challenge. So uh, because the impact is very minus, very small. So identify that impact in terms of odds ratio, relative risk. You really need a big sample to do that. But as, as I said, uh, you may not able to find the impact on the last health outcome. Try to assess the impact on the process of it. Like you're not able to find the impact on the deaths. Try to find on the hospital visits. Try, as I said in our uh, exercise on the traffic rationing system, odd even rule what we had, we're just able to document the impact of or even rule on the hospital admissions. That can be easily done. One of my students is currently, uh, who has completed his thesis. What is the uptake of uh, this mobile-based air quality monitoring system? So these are the small, small things which can be taken up. Uh, yes, for the generating the uh, more scientific, robust evidence, you need a more funding and all these things. But as a PG thesis, and again, I firmly believe that PG thesis is for the learning, you know, more more for the learning rather than for generating the research evidence. So as a learning exercise, try to take up this important aspect. Uh, I just went to one of the university where a student, with the help of uh, the national program, this NPCCH program, he got, he secured the funding for his thesis, where he's trying to study the impact of air pollution on the asthma in two sort of two districts you know, in the Northeastern states. So similar uh, things can be done. We really need to explore and be some sort of uh, adventurous in uh, taking up this topic. Yes, sir. So that is the main thing that you should be willing to go ahead and follow it up. That is the challenge, which is there. that you usually the thing in the three years of residency, will it be too risky a project to take up for my dissertation? But as you, sir, you have cited with examples that people who have done it and gone ahead I have definitely come up with good results. So, yes. So coming to the end of the stream. So thank you very much, sir, for such an engaging session with not just the theory and your live examples of how the research you have and your team have actively done in this field of air pollution. I would also like to thank our IPSM eConnect team and all the office bearers for supporting us in this PG lecture series. We encourage all our viewers to become a member of IPSM if you have not yet become to be more in touch and get to, to uh, contact with the experts on the field and get further uh, contacts through that, sir. 
So please subscribe to the IPSM channel and stay tuned for our further events. So yeah. thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Varun. And thank you again. Once again, I thank IAPSM eConnect team and entire IAPSM office bearers for this excellent initiative. Thank you so much. Yes. See you all soon. Thank you. Yes.